Hey y'all, so there are some massive improvements coming to Shader Graph in Unity 6.3. I have the alpha open and we'll jump into it today. Before we do, let's go ahead and look at some of the documentation that's been published from Fred Moreau and Ben Cloward at Unity around what is coming. So we have eight texture coordinates uh, and I'll just list a few of these. So you now have access to UV channels four through seven in Shader Graph. You can also now set properties and keywords in nested subgraphs, allowing for creating contained subgraphs and making authoring shaders by composition much easier. We also now have interpolation settings. So you can now set modifiers such as no interpolation on custom interpolators. And then we also have one of my most exciting pieces, the graph templates. So as with VFX graph, you can now create new shader graphs directly from templates, which is going to streamline and speed up the creation of your own custom shaders exponentially. So let's take a look at all of that together. One other thing that I'm going to address because I found it in this thread was the question of, hey, why are you investing further into shader graph? I understood that you were working on shader graph two, what's happening. So a quick addressing of that question here in this video is that shader graph two is effectively a complete rewrite of shader graph using the new graph toolkit tool that I had a video on just a few weeks ago. It also leverages block shaders. So forward compatibility is a high priority moving into shader graph two. One last addition that is not discussed here, but just had a great video from unity come out is the fact that there's now terrain shaders. So I will not get into that in this video because it's not th technically released inside of the package manager as a sample that we can pull down and start to look at. I will do a future video on that imminently, but in the meantime, just know that there are big improvements coming to the terrain system and your ability to customize that using shader graph. So let's go ahead and dive into 6.3 and take a look at this template system which in particular is what I want to cover today. Let's go into create shader graph, and then we're going to go to from template. Once you have from template open, I won't go through each and every one of these, but you can immediately start to get a sample of what each of these things are doing as you click on them. So as we come down through here, we can start to get into a template that can be assigned to UGUI canvas objects for creating things like a meter or a progress bar. We can have custom render textures, decals. If you want to create shaders that work with that, here's decal material volumes, unlit, built in, lit, 2D sprites, etc. So I'm just going to open up a lit basic. And what I'd be interested in here is can I take a lit basic shader, meaning that I can effectively use the metallic, the smoothness, the albedo, and add in something like vertex movement very quickly and easily, which means that I don't have to use kind of a default blank shader, add in the vertex movement, and then have to come back in and try to rebuild a lit basic shader into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create, we'll call this a movement test. You'll also notice that if I remove HD from active targets, we have that kind of partial error go away, but it is nice to see that by default, this can work with active targets that have a fallback. So you'll have high definition or universal as targets. And now we immediately have a really strong shader graph that we can start working with. So we have our base map, which is going to be a 2D texture. We then have a split texture transform where we're going to take tiling and offset into a tiling and offset node. Then we have the texture only come out into the sample texture 2D. Then we have one of the outputs of the tiling and offset node into this sample texture 2D with a normal map as the texture. So this is pulling the UV channel out of this node. And then we have our mask map over here it's going to come through the output of this UV as well. So then what we can do is start to take the different channels. So here we're actually splitting our mask map into R, G, and A. Um, as many of y'all know, mask maps effectively use red, green, blue, and alpha to do different 
uh, to pack the masks or to pack the textures uh, to make it more efficient and then re-leverage that over here. So you can see that this is what it looks like to take a mask map and split the channels out into your fragment shader. If we come back over here, we're gonna see that normal comes out into a normal strength, which allows you to multiply times a float, a scale that's an exposed variable, and then go into the normal here. And lastly, we're gonna go into multiply by a color, by the color map into base color. So then what I can do is without having to recreate all of this fragment shader stuff, I can come over here and I can create vertice movement. So let's go ahead and do that. So from here, I'm going to kind of work backwards into making changes. So I'm going to do an add node because we're going to need to add to our existing positional UV. So I'm going to pull the B down and do a position. Make this our object position. So now that I have the direction I want it to move, we can kind of backtrack over here. So what I want to do is find position. And then from position, I'm going to pull this out, do a split node, which is going to pull this into R, G, B, and A. I've done a much longer video on this previously, but effectively what we're doing is taking the position, and I'll go ahead and change this to, word, or to object space as well. I can then break it into R, G, and B, or X, Y, and Z. Take that split and pull the R out, and we're going to add into the A node. Now from here, we want to have this running over time. So I'm gonna make a time node and have this time run out into a multiply. I can then adjust time if I want to over here. And so let's go ahead and do that. I'll just make a float and we'll call this speed of movement. Pull this down and have that influence B which I want by default to not be zero, but instead let's just say five. And then I wanna take all of this and I want to put that into the add. Now, after we've added the time and the multiplication by the speed of movement with the current UV position splitting out X axes, I can now come over into the out of add and put that into a sign node, which is going to be going up and down over and over again, just as a sign node will. So now that we have the sign node, I'm going to go ahead and push that out into a multiply. And now what we can do is actually multiply the force of this by another float. So before connecting anything, I'll go ahead and create a new float and I'll say strength of movement. Pull this down over here. So then I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to put it into a vector three as let's say the Y channel. Pop that into the add. And then let's come over here into strength of movement and change that from zero to one. And now you can see what we have is along the X axis of the object, we're going to be on a sine wave applying movement in a Y direction. So this is taking it across X and moving it on the Y. So I'm happy with that. And the beauty of this is that I didn't have to go in and create all of this and then try to backtrack and figure out how to make the fragment piece of this shader and sort out what a lit shader was going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now I have movement test as the shader. And now if I want to go back into my main scene, I'm going to throw in a 3D object of a sphere. Scale that up just a little bit, take off the gizmos, come on over and do a new material. So then I can come up here, just type in movement in the top to find our movement test lit going to compile that shader and now I can see that I have all of this working. So now that we have this here, we can come over and look at in the surface inputs that we have that base map where we can then control the tiling and offset multiplied by a color. 
If we wanted to change this over, we can do that with a normal map and a normal scale, then a mask map that can be leveraged here to then split apart the RG and A channels in this case. Among other settings that we had showed down here as default. I really think this is an amazing improvement. And if we want to come in and create, go to shader graph and from template, you could get in here and spend a lot of time creating and checking out what these look like. A lot of them have great documentation. So I would definitely recommend that you hop in, try out some of the new templates and get all of the time savings that comes with it. I hope you're having a great day that this video has been helpful. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.